Good evening, ladies, as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with some more Hearthstone Arena. We're starting a new run. I'm gonna go for Paladin. Paladin spent a little bit of time on ye old shit list, and then I did really well with them, so let's see if I can recreate that magic. All right, we're starting off with the Junk Rare. Oh, none of this stuff is any good. Ah, uh, boy. We're just gonna take... The Jeeves can sometimes be amusing. But I don't want to get locked into playing a fast deck that spews out all of its cards. Abomination can be good, but a lot of time it's just junk. So we'll take the Crazed Alchemist. He always finds a use. Okay, only good card here is the Tiger, so let's just take that and move on. Tough call between the Protector and the Hammer, but I think the Hammer's overall better. It's removal, card advantage, reach, all in one. That's just very, very good. Alright. Tall Strider, I, I don't rank as a good 4-drop. I think that swap of 5 versus 4 health. Uh, or 5-4 versus 4-5 compared to the Eddie does really make a really huge difference. So we're going to take Mech Warper here to get another good early drop. Here, okay, so the Wolf is good for Paladins. You can buff up your recruits and do better damage. The Ogre Brood, I'm starting to come around, is, is a good 3-drop. That would fit my curve. War Golem's interesting, getting a nice big card early on. But I don't want to commit to a War Golem since it's not usually that great. Oh, it's tough. I'm going to take the wolf. I really want to have some buffs as a paladin, but maybe that's wrong. Well, I would have loved to take a war golem here, or whatever that other card was, or, or an ogre over any of these things. guess we'll take the warlord here. Hmm. Dark scale healer is a nice big body. Provide some healing. But I'm going to grab the stalker. He's good late as well as early. And I love being able to play something that can't get killed on turn two, except for by a flamethrower. Holy crap, this is terrible. I, um, I'm i going to take a Farseer. I don't think a second Frostwolf Warlord is palatable. I just cannot stomach playing two of those in one deck. Corehound's trash, so we're taking this guy. It's uh, sad, but it's what it's going to be. All right, Owl to get a Silence is important. We can grab the Purifier for some hilarity, but I think Arjun Commander for some removal and game reach is just better overall. Have a chance for a second Silence, or a second Tiger. Both are fine. I think Avenge is nowhere near on the level of either of these cards. Hmm. Second Silence? Or some more endgame potential. Gosh. Alright, I'm gonna try the second Silence. We'll see if I regret it. Okay, this time we'll take the Purifier, because the other stuff's junk. Oh, this is awful. Just awful. Well, let's see. I have a 2-2, two, 2-3. Two, two, I actually need something that hits for 3. So I'm going to take the Stomper, even though the Raider has potential synergy. Okay. Silverhand Knight. It's a decent 5-drop. Grab Light's Justice, though, for some more removal. All right. Zombie Chow for an early game potential card, or War Golem for some end game. Let's take the Chow. I think it's important to have those 1-drops. I've been really coming around on it. Clockwork Gnome fits that mold, but I'm going to grab Seal of Light, because this is a bit light on removal at the moment. Yeah, this is terrible. I don't want any more 2-drops. The deck would be too weak, so i got to take the Tall Strider, even though I'm not that jazzed about it. True Silver comes along, finally. I think I'll take the Spectre Knight over the Yeti, because my, my, my upper end is a bit low. So I need to beef it up a little bit. <laughs> Bless you, Psyche. i got to... Live with some regrets on passing those war golems, I guess. This could have been a war golem and something else, too. So here, at the Swordsmith's just unpalatable, so we'll take the Ancient Mage, although I think he's junk. Ugh. God, this is terrible. Do I have any dreams to live for with the Mech Warper? I don't. Not in the slightest. So we'll take the Snapjaw. Hammer of Wrath. Former champion, as great as the shield of mini bot is, I have way too many two drops already, so I gotta get some more endgame going here. Well, this fits in my curve nicely and is some more removal. If it were just a regular old three drop, I probably would have taken the Archmage just to have some endgame. Alright, I'll take a buffing card and fill up my curve a bit. Trog is good and all, but I'm gonna grab the gnome for some more of those juicy juicy one drops. Don't have any card draw here, so loot hoarder or blessing, we'll take the hoarder. And Flashy Dingle, I think, is just bad, so we'll take a second gnome. This is a nice, easy pick. I need some more endgame, and the healing is nice. And then, um, these are Drake for some more card draw. Alright, well, I think I misdrafted that. I think I ended up with too many two drops, and I think I should have taken one of those war golems. I could easily find myself in a situation where I just need to drop something big, and all I have is cheap crap, or an empty hand. 
Well, let's see what works, what happens. Um, I might hang on to some of these games, but without Consecration. Very much removal. Or a particularly solid end game. I'm not actually fancying my chances too much. Alright, I'm not going to keep that 3 drop. This deck has enough 1s and 2s. I should mulligan 3s. And I don't find it. Well, we'll just have to settle for this on turn 1. Maybe you can kill something. Or discourage him from playing something. And a recruit on turn 2. The recruit plus this can maybe kill something. The wolf rider can be removal, and then I've got this snap jaw, which might be a decent card to have versus a shaman. Makes a totem. Hopefully it's the 1-1. One, one. It actually is. Well, that's a little bit of good fortune to start the day. Because, of course, I can kill this thing. Seal of Light is interesting. Now I can deal up to 3 damage, thanks to Light's Justice. So I might use it instead of a Wolf Rider. Although, we'll see. He's got a slow start. He actually coined into a totem. Probably means he has a Flame Tongue. Which means, as if I weren't already interested in doing so, I should definitely... The battle. Kill off anything he plays and just assume he's got a flame tongue. Or he could be he's just bad, although it is 11 a.m. on Saturday. Actually, Saturday weekend? Yeah, it could be some bad players out there who just coin totems. See if he's got the forked lightning to clear my board. He does not. He has a panther, which I'm pretty okay with. And this could have been a stranglethorn tiger at the moment. I'm not too pleased about it. I'd rather have a Sprinklethorn Tiger than that Spellbreaker right now, but on the other hand, I do have my other Tiger anyway, and maybe he will play something that I want to silence, such as a uh, Taunt. He's had a very, very, very slow start. Two Totems and a Panther, and then a Totem on turn four. So, he does have that Flame Tongue, which means he can almost kill off my big dumb beast. He really should, I think. Oh, he chooses to go for the face. Well, we got a couple of different options here, as we so often do. I can run my recruit and my weapon into the taunt, which he got very luckily, might I add. Then the wolf rider can kill the flame tongue, and the big dumb beast can kill the panther. I still have a 3 1 and a 2 3. And then I can also play the tiger. Otherwise, I could silence the flame tongue, hmm. kill the totem. Actually, no, better yet would be silence the totem, kill the flame tongue, kill the beast. I'll leave him with a 0 2. But no, I would just kill it. And then, of course, I get to keep my Recruit, but I have a 4-3 out instead of a 5-5. Five, five. And I also... No, I still end up taking the same amount of damage on this. So basically, I can keep the Recruit in exchange for having a 4-3 instead of a 5-5. Five, five. I don't think that's worth it. I think it's better just to play the 5-5. Five, five, and then save the Taunt for potentially a better time later. Yep. So he did have the Flame Tongue. I'm safe from Lightning Storm. The Tiger survives it. He's got seven cards to my seven. I still have a Weapon Tick. Weapon actually proved very good, so I'm glad I took the Weapon here over the War Balm or whatever it could have been. I wonder how he's going to protect that Questing Adventure. Oh! Ho -ho. Well, I don't know if that's actually the best combo, because when it comes back, it's just a 2-2. Two -two. So we got a couple of different options here. I could silence this thing and just kill it with my big dumb beast. And that will also take care of the copy. And then I can make a recruit. I mean, that seems pretty good. I could kill it once, kill it twice. My big dumb beast survives with one health. And then I can play a Spectre Knight. But I think here I might as well just do this. Alright, well, I guess I'm pretty glad I had a Spellbreaker instead of a Tiger there. Interesting. Didn't, didn't think I'd be that happy about that choice. Gotta start looking for the win. None of my... Well, actually, Seal of Light is 2 damage. And I have this. So that's 3 damage. 8, 10, 17, 18? Yes, I have lethal damage. Alright, well, I should have clearly waited on that Spellbreaker. But we're still doing okay here, so we're going to kill this. And we're going to kill this. And then I have 7. Oh my god, can I have 1 if I had... Killed it with a big dumb beast, and I could have hit him for 3, 6, 10, 11. No, I couldn't have killed him, but I should have looked for that possibility. I don't know how he comes back from this situation. Don't know what a shaman has that would work. Double lightning storm, I guess. With two threes in the specs or night. Then he'd have four cards to my five. I'd actually still be in the lead, but obviously that would, that would buy him some time. I don't think shamans have any other answer. I could even get past an Earth Elemental at this point. 
My girlfriend, who's very nice, gave me a cheese stick. So I'm gonna eat that now. One of the things about hanging out with a four-year-old on a regular basis is you start to, you know, fall back in love with things you loved as a kid. Like cheese sticks. They're delicious. String cheese. It's a bit salty. It's cheesy. It's not as bad for you as most food. That's gonna give me some protein, some calcium, strong bones. We're gonna crush some enemies. Do you guys know that white is common, blue is rare, purple is epic, and orange is legendary? I did not know that. Glad they have those tips there. You know, it'd be nice to have an like an option to um, remove the tips or something. Like you can go in and see what all the tips are and see which ones you want to remove, just so you don't have to read that dumb text all the time. Of course, Blizzard thinks that the community can't handle more than nine deck slots, so clearly that would be way too intellectually taxing for Hearthstone players to be able to have such power at their fingertips. Up against the king. I will fight with honor. Justice Got a terrible hand. Nope, nope, nope. Nope. Hey, right, there we go. Okay, so that zombie chow versus war golem choice, if that was the choice, I don't remember. Ends up being okay here. Ah, he's hovering a card, but he's not AFK. I think this deck is probably worse than the average paladin deck. And he kept his whole hand, I think. Or did he mulligan this card? Can't remember. So it's a bit scary here, but let's see what he's got. I'd love to see him coin into a 2 3. Because then I can play the wolf and kill it with the zombie chow. If he plays a 3 2, that's a bit less exciting. Zombie chow is still good in that case, but then I all I do is just play a 3 2 and I trade. Perfect. He has a 2 3. Does he have a clockwork gnome to follow this up? No. Okay, well, the wolf versus the war golem choice actually ends up working. If it was war golem versus wolf, I can't actually remember. Um, alright, that was good. So, let's see, we used up his coin, went up a card. Got him to play this without anything on the table. Wow, that that's actually huge. That wolf is was pretty much a game-deciding thing right there, because had I not been able to kill it and played some other thing... I guess, well, hang on a minute, I guess the Mech Warper couldn't have killed the Zombie Child with the Divine Shield. Yeah, whatever, it's not that big of a deal. Anyway, we're going to trade this, I think. I can make a Recruit, which technically takes me up a card. And I will, but the only reason I'm doing it is because I have a True Silver Champion. If I did not have a True Silver Champion to kill something with four health next turn, I would have played this so I could kill any Brutes and Dancing Swords and things. Embrace the light. Or that, for example. Okay, uh, Sanderson Cleric, interesting, but irrelevant. This game is going very well so far. I'm actually up two cards with a board lead and a weapon in hand. So, that's, I mean, that's great. Actually, three cards if you count the fact that I also put a recruit out there. Gonna play a Spectre Knight, which is really difficult for Paladins to deal with. Well, it's difficult for everyone to deal with, but I think Paladins especially, they can peacekeep it, but that's about it. I have two silences in the deck to handle that. He goes back up a card with the hammer, but that's fine because now he's hoping that I'm going to skip a beat, and I am not. I'm going to play Babonk. That's the Spectre Knight's nickname, Babonk. He's got six cards to my six, seven, soon to be eight. I'm on the lead on life and on the board. He has to have a good turn here. I can deal up to 5 damage with Recruit plus Weapon. And he makes a Recruit. It's not really what he wanted it to be doing here on turn 5. We must he makes it a 2-2. Two -two. Well. Nah, it's still not good enough. Alright, so we got a lot of different ways to play this turn. I could Argent Commander into 1 and then make the Recruit and hit him for 5. I could Hammer of Wrath 1, play the Stomper, or make another Recruit. Doesn't seem right. I could play the Big Dumb Beast. True Silver this, Spectre Knight that. Hmm. 
I'm gonna go for the big dumb beast here. The big dumb beast, what I like about him is that he is really, really good as a minion sweeper, because he a reinforcement sweeper. But my opponent is never gonna want to spend removal killing it because it's just a big dumb beast. He has six cards to my eight, soon to be nine. I can go up a card with this and up a card with the hammer. So it's pretty good. Even if you don't count my recruits, I still have six to his six and about to be up seven. So I'm pretty much dominating here. He needs to have a very, very good continuation. He has two Ogre Brutes. I don't think that's quite good enough. So let's see what our options are. I could hammer and recruit one and then Shattered Sun Cleric and pop the other. Then this will be vulnerable to Consecration, as would both Recruits and the Cleric herself. I could Argent Commander one, and then I'm just trading the Spectrum for the other, then everything is vulnerable to Consecration except for the Snapjaw. I could actually buff the Snapjaw, throw a Recruit there, and Hammer of Wrath and throw a Recruit there, so that this only dies to True Silver Champion. Why don't we go for that? So always draw cards first, let's see what we get. Ah, Light's Justice. This is... Okay, so if I do Light's Justice to kill this guy, then I can't play Shattered Sun Cleric. So this guy I actually have to kill with the Spectre Knight. Is that worth it? I don't think it's actually worth it. We must cleanse the sun well. So I'm going to trade away both of my recruits. Have a board that's resistant to Consecration. And True Silver will kill this, but he probably doesn't have a True Silver, or let's face it, he would have used one by now. He needs a big creature, basically. Because that would at least take up two, take two of my creatures off the board. Then if you played another big creature after that, you could maybe win. All right, so Voldemort Ogre is a good start. Now the question is, should I start to try to race? I could deal what seven, ten, fourteen, fifteen damage, and then of course if he plays something to clear my board out, I could be in trouble. Or I could just play it safe. Why don't I just play it safe? There's no reason to go crazy here. Kill his ogre, end up with basically the same board I had at the end of the last turn. Except I had a 3-2, now I have a 4-2. These guys stayed the same. Dealt some damage to him, took out his threat. And now I also have an extra 2-1 on the table, so I'm threatening lethal. He's really got to come up with something pretty good. Sunwalker would be good. Consecration is alright. Does he have a second Consecration? Ooh, I wasn't planning around that. Double Consecration. He actually... Top deck to Consecration. Well, he's hanging in there now. It's a good thing I didn't try to race him, or else I would have probably been in very bad shape. Well, now that he's played two Consecrations, I'm feeling pretty safe about just throwing a bunch of crap on the floor. Because I have a Stormwind Champion waiting in the wings, and that means I'm threatening lethal. If he plays two more Consecrations, that would clear the board again, and then he'd be down to two cards to my three. I'd play a Stormwind Champion. He could still technically win. Then he could play Deathwing. I mean, yes, he could We could win here if he has the perfect card. It's not inescapable. Wow, Malagos. All right, well played. Well played. Frostful Forlord, as tempting as that is. Wait, is this seven, nine? Seven, nine? Yeah. Wait a minute, seven? I'm not going to bad manner they kill him with Light's Justice. Let's just... Get the kill here. Okay, King goes down. All right, that was good. And um, I think actually, even though I thought I misdrafted this deck, a lot of my drafting choices were just perfect here. Lights Justice and the Wolf were picks that I kind of agonized over, and, and Zombie Chow as well. And those were just important to setting up a grip in the game. Then I had Stormwind Champion for the kill. Even drew a Frostful Forlord that was actually going to be quite effective. Yeah, maybe I didn't draft as badly as I did. Or maybe I did draft terribly and I just got lucky there. You never know sometimes. So we're up to wow, a lot of money. 13400 And I have a daily quest for another forty, So it's like almost 13500 Alright, if this is a good arena, I could be above 13500 Maybe make it to 14000 before the expansion strikes. Here's our next worthy opponent, Hunter. I was just thinking it'd be time to play a mage. I was wrong. Our Tolentino, the Hunter. Mm, I have a little bit of life gain in this deck. Got the Justice League and True Silver Champion. Again, with a terrible opening hand. Top decked my way out of it last time. Mm, okay, a little bit of a top deck out of it this time. Don't have the Wolf to back up the Chow. And I've got this hunk of junk. Strowman Champion is just really excited. He's like, oh, I killed him last time. Let me get back in there. 
Oh, I remember when I first started playing Hearthstone, I loved how this guy's attack sound sounded so sarcastic. For the Alliance! Oh, so great. Well, anyway, let's see what he's got. Hopefully he just passes. Then I'd have a nice little board here with a zombie chow and a recruit. And he does! Great. Big dumb beast comes out to play. Well, we have a curve. Three, four. Do wish this were the tiger instead of a spellbreaker now. So... Last time it came up, I was happy to have the silence this time, not so much. He's got a three drop here. I don't have my wolf to buff these guys. This could be bad. Oh, it's a wolf rider to kill the zombie chow? Well, that's okay. Um, he used up his coin and traded a three drop for a one drop. I'd say I'm pretty content with that trade. Okay, we got a five drop now. The deck has been doing a pretty good job curving out effectively. So he's got six cards to my six-ish. Spider tank is really good, because I can't run in here twice. I don't have my buffer. Shoot! Spider tank's just really good. Alright, well, we'll hit him for five. And then presumably after he uses spider tank to kill off the farseer, I, I can use the snapjaw to kill off the tank, although obviously things can happen. In the meantime, that would wreck those plans. Give me a quest. Alright, he must have a one mana card or he wouldn't play this. And he does. So, unfortunately, I have an ugly choice to make here. Either I kill the tank, or I kill the questing adventurer, but I can't kill both. I could silence the questing adventurer and run the snapshot in, or I could just play a Spectre Knight and throw away the recruit. I think having the bigger creature on the on the table is worth it. It was worth losing the recruit, because if this were just a 4-3 on the table, it wouldn't have been that great. The tank could have just killed it. Now this thing actually kills off the tank and still pops the shield. Is he gonna pop the shield? I would actually be pretty good. Just pretty glad to see that. Okay, good. I was worried about multi shot there. That would let him clear the board. Oh, he deadly shots the Spectral Knight. That is maybe the game's best answer to a Spectral Knight. Luckily, he's got nothing for the remaining two mana. Well, it's anyone's game. I've got some really big cards, but I could have a tough time playing them. Oh, one mana off from playing that. Alright, so he's got six cards to my six, but he has the, the all-important play right here. And then the tiger is quite solid. It'll kill off my drake. Clockwork, no, well, if only I could have top-decked that off the drake. So I could play the Stormwind Champion and make this trade with the tiger. Or I could play a bunch more minions out and try to get a Stormwind Champion to be better. Yeah, let's do it. I'm gonna go ahead and make a recruit to kill off the tiger. And then we'll also play the... Stalker? Clockwork Gnome. And the wolf. So now if he just runs the tiger into the drake, they'll trade. So he'll have to throw the tiger at the wolf or something instead. Okay, if he has unleashed the hounds, that could win the game for him. But, um, I feel like I gotta take some risks. I'm not worried about getting burned out because I got six health in my back pocket, mm -hmm. so that's fine. Only thing I'm worried about is that he just overruns me on the board. He has unleashed the oh, Fuck. Well, that means he gets to kill the recruit, the gnome, and then his choice of the wolf or the drake. Probably he's going to choose to kill the drake. No, he goes for the wolf, so that means he must plan to kill the drake with just the wolf, and then feel pretty comfortable with the tiger at one health. And that is exactly what happens. Web spinner. So I could silence this to stop him from getting a beast, I suppose. God damn it. Unleash the hounds. Really needed him not to have that. Well, Hammer of Wrath's a good top deck. So even though this is a bit overkill, I go up a card. Which I really need right here. And in fact, I am gonna silence this web spinner to go up another card. Alright. Not the play I loved making there. But now he's got five cards to my six, five if you kick, don't count the Whirling Blades, six if you count the top deck. Health total is not a problem, I need him to let me live. Oh my god, that is awful. So now he can kill off the Stalker, or he can kill off the Spellbreaker if he wants to, and then use the Glyvezooka to kill off this next turn. South Sea Deckhand to clear the board. Alright, well, he's getting a bit low on cards, which is possibly going to be my saving grace. My Warper, at this point of the game, doesn't really matter. I've got plenty of health. Alright, I might still pull this out. Let's see what we get off the top of Mech Warper. Hmm. 
All right, I'm gonna hang on to the Stormwind Champion. Don't know if I'm making the right decision or not, but the decision I'm gonna make is this. Now if he runs into the Mech Warper and the Glyvezuka, his Mech Warper will die. He can run the Mech Warper and the Glyvezuka into the Tall Strider, but then he'll take some damage, and I still have two creatures out. I can make a Recruit and Stormwind next turn, or Recruit and this guy next turn, depending on the situation. He could still win, though. He's in the running. He just needs to have some pretty good cards. If he has some big creatures, he's in fine shape. If he clears my board, he's probably not going to do that much. Okay, Flare doesn't really make a difference. It's just a two-mana cycle. He finds a secret. I don't really... I'm actually not, I'm not concerned about any of the secrets. All right, that is clearly Explosive Trap. It's very obvious. He's setting everything up to die to the Explosive Trap. Interesting. Explosive Sheep is his last card. Hmm. So I was thinking I could play the Stormwind Champion, of course, and um, that would buff this up to survive the Explosive Trap. But then the Sheep is there, so I'm this thing is still going to end up dying. So why don't we just... The battle. Oh, hang on. But if we pop the Sheep... Then the trap is still there. That's annoying. Oh wait, I got it. So I'm gonna pop the sheep. It's not explosive trap. Okay. Well, well then. Um, in that case, I think I will play Stormwind Champion, so that my Tall Strider survives the sheep. And now, just like that, we're threatening lethal with several cards to spare. This is suddenly really great. If he has Deathwing. I might still be able to beat him. This would take a few turns to kill him. Yeah, I might still win even if he has a Deathwing. Well and he can see. All right, that was, that, was, that was close. He did get very lucky having unleashed the Hound right when he needed it. And I guess I was wrong saying I was gonna lose if he had the Hounds because he actually ran out of steam. He ended up being able to clear my board a lot, but he didn't ever establish his own board presence. He never played any big cards. Yeah, I'm going to give this deck some credit. At that time, he deadly shot at a Spectre Knight, and he unleashed the Hounds for five dogs. Still lost, though, so yeah. Maybe this deck is better than I thought it was. Okay, well, we got time for a few more games. So who's our next worthy opponent? Is it time for a mage? Or, ooh, I know, I know. It's time for the Shaman's Curse to reawaken. Yes, that's what I'm predicting here. A Shaman to put me in my place. I am just guessing wildly there's there's no mage. Ah, oh, it is a mage. Should have gone for the probabilistically biggest choice. Fancy hat. All right, we get the zombie chow. So out of the four games I've played, I think I've played zombie chow on turn one and three of them. That is pretty fortunate. Have a loot hoarder that I don't mind playing against a mage on turn two. That's totally fine. If she wants to spend her time killing it, I don't lose any cards in the process. And... And, um, this deck, I guess, does have a somewhat decent endgame, so I should be okay. Alright, let's see if she's going to coin for a Frostbolt. She plays her own Zombie Chow. Well, I really wish I had my Wolf, because the Wolf would let me kill off her Chow. Hmm. If I play a Recruit, she can ping it. And then with the Zombie Chow, nothing happens. If I play a Loot Hoarder, she pings it and I get a card. Mm. I'm just going to play the Loot Hoarder, put some extra pressure on. I can actually run in here like this, and then she can ping off one, but then the other can still kill off hers. I'm not going to do it. The reason I'm not going to do it is that uh, I can actually Seal of Light plus my other creature to kill off the Chow if I really want to kill it off. Uh huh. Well... Looks like we're both playing the same game here. So, what do we do? I could silence off the loot hoarder and kill off, kill it off. I think I'm gonna try this. I do have an extra silence in the deck. So I might as well just do this. I lose the owl, but she loses the card that she would have drawn. Now she can ping off one and tr trade the chow for the other. Looks like she will do that. So she, I think, ends up bumming up a card in the end anyway. Does she seriously have another one drop? She seriously does. Well, that's okay, because the Snapjaw is pretty good at mopping this up, so I'm not too bothered by that. She 
doesn't really want to fireball or polymorph the Snapjaw. She has seven cards to my five, but three of my four cards in hand get me a card, so I could still be okay here if she doesn't play a big drop. Oh, she finds a Blast Mage. Right, it splits at 50-50. Hammer of Wrath won't kill this, unfortunately. Hammer of Wrath plus Light's Justice will kill it, and I think it's worth it. So we'll blast it. Justice. justice. And try to keep that board clear. Okay, so she has seven cards, one of which is a spare part. I have six. Two of my cards still draw cards, and I've got a 2-3. I'd actually give the lead to her here, because it's turn five, she can play a, a card, and most five drops would just dominate the situation. She has a Water Elemental, which isn't a five drop, but it's just about as good. Oh, she seriously has the coin still? I totally forgot about that. And an Amani Berserker. Hmm. Well, shucks. So, Seal of Light would let me hit for three, and then Hammer of Wrath. I could actually kill the Water Elemental, but then I can't kill off the Berserker. I could Seal of Light to kill off this, but then all I'm doing is playing a Gnome and a Recruit. I could play the Drake and a Gnome, and then I could kill off the Berserker, and I could take five damage to the face, or I could lose my Snapjaw. I actually like none of my options. Hammer of Wrath, go up a card. Gnome, and Recruit. Mm. Okay, we'll do this. When I say Gnome and Recruit, I just meant um, Top Deck, Mech Warper, and Gnome. Yeah, that's what I meant. Okay. Well, I think I'm a little bit behind because Water Elemental's very strong. And she's going to have me below 20 health if she wants. And then everything dies to Flame Strike. I'm in a little bit of trouble here. Now, she can kill two of my creatures, guaranteed, so Storm and Champion's only going to buff one thing. It's not that great. This is the kind of situation where I really wish I had Consecration. Alright, now the good news in this is that she did keep two of my creatures alive. So, Storm and Champion, could it do something good for me? Make this a 3-4? Doesn't really work. This makes it a 3-2. I could kill that and ping it off. No, I could kill that and that and that. Hmm... I could Azure Drake, and then just kill it. And seal of Light for three damage. Oh, I'm just not getting the right numbers at all. Oh, man. I could silence the elemental. Really wish this were a tiger. You know, if this were a tiger, I could make a recruit and tiger, or Seal of Light and a tiger, everything would be great. All right, well, let's play Storm and Champion. I'm not sure if this is the right play, but it's the play I'm gonna make. So, I do just want to get rid of the harder hitting thing, even though the elemental has such a good ability, because I really want to um, For justice. minimize how much damage she can deal to my Stormwind Champion. She has six cards, I have six. If you count the weapon, this thing's gonna die one way or another, I'm pretty sure, this turn. I can get up one more card from the Drake. Maybe I go up another card just by smashing something with Storm and Champion. And actually plays a 4-drop and a 3-drop, and then where is she going to send the Elemental? I'm assuming to kill off the Snapjaw. She hits me in the face to stop me from attacking, and that also um, has another effect, which of course is it gets me a little bit lower, so maybe she can try to burn me out. She could burn me out if she has two fireballs and one of her creatures gets to attack. Okay, we got a crazed alchemist here. So what I could do is I could swippity swap the spider tank, make it a 4-3. I could kill off... Wait a minute, there's no point in killing this. This is also a 3-4, but it has an ability. Right. So I could kill that, the, nullif the nullifier with my storm and champion, swippity swap this, kill it with the snap draw, and then I still have a bunch of mana left over. I could put Taunt on the champion. Or I could just risk it and risk her having two fireballs. Or I could Seal of Light just as a healing card, which is hilariously bad. I could silence this, which would let me get past it. 
then I could actually kill off the tank and that thing, but then I'm still gonna die to two fireballs. Okay, so we're gonna do this. 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 Just in case she actually has the... What's his face? Two fireballs. Um, and the reason I didn't play anything else, I didn't play the Drake, is because right now a Flame Strike clears my board. And the Flame Strike would have died as well, or the Drake would have died as well, so I didn't want to throw away the Drake. Alright, well, now if she has two fireballs, almost like Seal of Light to play around that, I'm gonna die. Truth of a Champion. Still dead, dead to two fireballs, but uh, that might be what I end up doing anyway. Alright, so we'll do this. Go down to 10 health. And let's see if she's got the double fireballs that I was playing around so conscientiously. I'm in trouble if she plays a big minion, because I can heal up for six, but it's not a good situation. Does she have a Frostbolt? Oh my god. Oh my god, if she had a Frostbolt, that would have been so bad. That was so bad. Alright, luckily she didn't. Okay, well... Let's think. This is a decent top deck. Um, so I could run into that, run this into that. This stays with one health. But what's the point of that, really? Yeah, I think the, make, the move that makes more sense is to kill that. Seal of Light. Kill that. Get in her face. I'll make a recruit. Instead of the Gildan Stalker, because again, if she has another Flame Strike, I don't want to lose the Stalker. Really regret this is the Tiger. That could actually cost me the game here. I need Justice League to heal myself up above Danger Territory. This is not a super big board, especially if she clears it with Flame Strike and plays a Dominion on the following turn. I could be in a lot of trouble. She has a Blizzard, which is just as bad as Flame Strike. Because she can ping this thing to death. Oh my god, she chose not to ping it to death. Well then, we get a little bit of a break. Because I can actually silence this off and kill the dwarf. And now, I just gotta hope she doesn't have any more flame strikes. Although even if she does, she'd still be down to just one card. It could potentially go in my favor when in the ensuing top deck war. Okay, so she pings off the recruit and plays nothing. Well, that's suspicious as all hell. I don't know what that means, but Spectro Knight's a really, really, really good top deck. I'm not going to play this in case she does have the mass removal, because that could be something she's holding on to. But this thing doesn't die to Flame Strike or Blizzard, and it cannot be fireballed or polymorphed, so it's just great all around. She keeps pinging off my recruits, which I am A-OK -okay with, and then she Flame Cannons and hits the Spectro Knight, which is sad, because that means it will die to a... Mass removal spell. Fireball goes on not my face. That's awesome. Guardian of Kings survives flame strikes. We'll play it, make a recruit. Hit her for six. Okay, now it's getting a little bit tense for her. This is not quite lethal damage after she pings the recruit. This is 11. She's at 12 health, but she's getting very close to death. And I just healed up above burn range and in my head on cards. And she seems not to have any more mass removal, so we win! Wow, all right, uh, 4 no with, again, another deck I thought wasn't very good. Why didn't I think this was good? It's got good cards in it. It's got some crappy cards in it, too. That Snapjaw, though, man, do I need to, like, reevaluate that card? That's a card I no one's ever liked for as long as Hearthstone has been around. A vanilla 2-7 for 4, but it is kind of handy that nobody ever wants to kill it because it's just not worth the resources, and it almost always picks up something or helps you finish something off. I don't know if I'd still ever, like, take it over a Yeti, but I don't know. I've not been unhappy to draw it, which I wish I could say the same for the Rampages and Whirlwinds and things like that for my Warrior deck. Dash Gallant. Well, it was a Druid who ended my run last time. Cut me off at 10 wins, that jerk. Let's keep our 2-drop and our 3-drop. And get a 1-drop. All right, this is okay. The Gnome... Well, let's see what he wants to do. So I am the second player, which means he can just on curve shapeshift and kill this. And then I can play a 2-2, which isn't that exciting. 
And then maybe I can kill what he plays with the Wolf Rider, maybe not. He plays a Noitron. Ugh, okay. Well, let's think about this. If I switch the gnome stats, it becomes a 1-2. I can ping off the shield, make it a 1-1. One, one. But then he can finish it off and it'll be a 1-1, one, one, or he can shapeshift it. Or I could Seal of Light and just throw both things at it. You know what? Let's try this out. For science. Pink. And now next turn I can make a Recruit and a Gnome and have everything die to swipe. Or maybe I can Wolf Ride into something. I'd love to see him shapeshift here, because it's better for him to, for me if he shapeshifts than if he plays a 3-drop. Like ah, he plays a Novice Engineer. Well, that is actually kind of annoying, because it will live. Because I can't... I, uh, there's no reason for me to try to kill that thing with the Wolf Rider, that's for sure. Alright, so let's play Mech Warper. Let's play the Gnome for free. And you know what? Good option now, better than the best option later. I'm going to give that thing taunt to stop the engineer from killing off my alchemist. But a swipe, of course, kills everything. Can't always have it all. Got to assume if you're 4-0 and playing a druid, there are going to be swipes in their decks. So hopefully he just hasn't drawn it yet. Pay attention, class. Ew, that's difficult to deal with. All right. Mm, does that change anything? Oh, Light's Justice plus Wolf Rider doesn't quite kill the Violet Seacher, but... The Violet Seacher? But, um, I could go Seal of Light... No, that, that makes no sense. We'll just Wolf Rider... And use the Gnome so that I can get my spare part. This deck doesn't have Mr. Tinkers or anything that would make me care about, uh... Leaving a mech on the table. Put him in his fat face, and then now next turn I can coin into the Argent Commander, and with the Light's Justice I can hit for five. Of course, if he has a Druid of the Claw here, that won't be good enough. I won't be able to play Reversing Switch, I'll be a mana shy of that. He chooses to Wrath this. Is that for three damage or for one? No, it's for three damage, so he can shapeshift to kill that Alchemist now. Cl uh. Savagery? What? Oh, he's gonna play a two drop, right. Otherwise he would have just shapeshifted, but he wanted to play this out, which makes totally perfect sense. Okay, well, might as well do this. Donkity donk. He's got four cards to my four ish plus a weapon, but my cards are a bit weird. One of them's a spare part. One of them is a pretty small removal spell, and then one of them is this guy, which I can't even play next turn. It's a 5-6 for 7, the healing is wasted, and it's overpriced. So I'd say he's got the advantage here. 4-2 is not that big of a deal on turn 6. And he has a Trog, which I can kill. Okay. I can kill it in a variety of ways. I could, of course, run in my dude and hit it with the weapon. Or I could reversing switch and run him into the dude, then I can save a tab on the weapon. I don't need to preserve that weapon or anything. So yeah, we'll just play the tall strider and a recruit. We'll kill it the straight old-fashioned way. And now I have a 5-4 and a 1-1. One, one. He has four cards. He's a druid. He's probably got something big. He hasn't been playing that much stuff during the game. I think I'm going to lose this, even though it seems good right now. Reversing switch does not work very well against iron barks. It won't work very well against an ancient of war, though. Fell Reaver, oh geez. Okay, and a wild growth. Hmm. Well, Fel Reaver. You just, I, this is just a really one of the hardest things in Hearthstone is deciding whether or not you can actually beat a Fel Reaver by playing tons of cards. I can throw away nine of his cards, take him down to ten cards, then I have to play three more cards at some point to get him to run out of cards completely. Let me. I mean, I'm going to be able to play this. So I've got 12 cards worth of burn here. He's got seven cards left after that. I, I think right now is not the situation where I could actually beat the Fall Reaver. So what I am going to do is... 
Do I play... Now, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to play this guy. It, it doesn't waste my healing too much. So we're going to do... Wait a minute. Hold on. I can't actually Seal of Light and play him. Right. Okay. So I'm thinking Seal of Light plus the weapon plus the Tall Strider to kill it. But then I might as well also... Wow. Some pretty big stuff he just lost. I'm also going to play that guy. Wow. Uh, okay. He really lost some high quality cards but I lost a lot of health and my board is not that impressive so let's see what he's got he's got three cards to my th you know six technically but you know these are recruits a one one weapon and a spare part and then I got this guy who's my saving grace he's the biggest thing I've got after throwing away iron barks and spectral knights and swipes what did he top deck he top decked mm. Scenarius! Well, I'd say this guy's deck is pretty good. Jeez. Oh, jeez. Okay. Well, this guy actually isn't too bad. It'll kill off both treants. And then I'll just play Guardian of Kings. Do I want to reversing switch Scenarius so that it dies to the Guardian of Kings? Because right now if it hits it, he can shapeshift this and will be a 3 health. It's risky to do that because bad things can happen. But I'm going to do it. The battle. The battle. Alright, so he, <laughs> he lost Ironbark, Harpy, Spectra Knight, Swipe, and then that just led paved the way for Scenarius. This guy's deck is outrageous. Uh, what did he top deck? A Druid of the Claw. Wow, he's got nothing but gas up his ass. That's what I like to say when, when people have lots of good cards all in a row. Hits me in the face. Interesting. I guess he figured I was going to do the trade, so he might as well just kill me. Alright, so he thanks me. Some nice manners here. Yeah, I can't win to fatigue. There's no way. I'm out of cards myself. I needed frickin' Jeeves to be able to get back from this. Frostwolf Warlord would be pretty big. Stormwind Champion could be big. But I'm out of cards. So, uh, what the hell does he have? Swipe? Starfall for three damage across the board. Wow! This deck. Well, I did say you should expect a Druid with 4 no to, you know, have a swipe, but that is just one of the most insane decks I've played against in a long time. There's not a single bad card in there, and he just had non-stop amazing cards. Even throwing away a bunch of good cards with Nourish didn't help me. Alright, well, we'll concede and we'll play. That guy's going to 12 wins, I bet. So, that'll do it for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. Please like and or subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And we'll be back soon for the rest of the run. Take care, everybody.